For decades, Luangowel was a coal mining town selling and using the fuel. But over the past 15 years, it's ditched fossil fuels to emerge as an eco-pioneer. It's just one of many communities cutting their carbon footprint, and that's driving global energy giants like Total to find more environmentally friendly sources of energy. We have access to cheap gas that we can bring to the market, and the electricity shall come from renewable sources such as solar, wind and hydroelectric power. The cost of renewable energy has dropped significantly in recent years, making it a viable alternative to conventional fuels for many more people. The cost of solar energy has dropped to one-sixth of what it was back in 2007. The fall in wind energy costs is twice as sharp over the same period. And the International Energy Agency says energy efficiency has improved, so fewer units of electricity are needed to complete the same amount of work. But much of this improvement has been driven by government policy, and experts warn that not all companies want to clean up their act. Companies uh, left to their own devices uh, may not always pursue energy efficiency with the urgency that is needed to meet uh, climate change targets, so there is definitely an important role for government and government policy. And while growing demand for clean energy is attracting big oil and big auto to go green, many of their conventional businesses are still billowing fumes from fossil fuels at an alarming rate. Only four countries globally have fuel efficiency standards for trucks. And those four countries are China, the United States, Japan and Canada. So for example, all of Europe does not have any fuel efficiency standards for trucks. So while more communities are getting together to reduce their carbon emissions, the lack of a policy push may explain why most large companies are not eager to clean up their act. Mubin Nasir, TRT World. Let's focus on Total for a moment now. And joining me from Paris is our editor at large, Craig Capitas. Craig, great to have you. Um, Total is way ahead of other oil producers uh, in terms of renewable energy. It's just recently paid $1 billion for a French industrial battery maker. Um, why is Total in particular being so aggressive? Well, they realized that oil is going to run out at some point. Certainly the market for oil, I should say, is going to run out. And they have to get into alternative energies, and they have to get into it early, much in the same way that uh, the, oil, the early oil giants did in the 19th century in Titusville, Pennsylvania. No one thought that oil was going to go anywhere, but a number of people got in it, and they got very rich. And Total's going into it big time. And... Uh, uh, the great thing about Total that allows them to do this is they have the full backing of the French government in this, which certainly uh, gives them a leg up in the global market, I believe. Ah, so that's the crucial differentiator between them and other companies like Exxon, for example. Uh, so, Craig, are we seeing oh, the yeah. slow death of the, the business model that John D. Rockefeller established? In other words, dig oil out of the ground, refine it and sell the products? I think it's going to be a long, slow death, and I think in the interim you're going to see a rise in natural gas consumption because the clean technology, batteries and solar, progressing at leaps and bounds to be sure, but they still don't provide the kind of energy that's required to fuel the power needed to juice up an electric grid. And that's where natural gas comes in. So you're going to see, I think, uh, long benefits here to countries like Qatar that have great natural gas uh, reservoirs that they can tap into. Uh, you're still going to need oil for a real long time. Jet fuel, diesel fuel, it's still going to be around. But Total's gamble is, is very bold. They, they obviously want to be uh, the tip of the spearhead on this. Craig Capetus in Paris, thank you ever so much. Let us go to Cambridge in the UK now and joining me from there is Tony Juniper. He's a leading British environmentalist and author. Uh, Tony, great to have you with us once again on Money Talks. Uh, let's uh, stay with Total. Do you think Total is an exception in its move towards uh, electricity production? Uh, or do you think that we're going to see other oil companies following in its footsteps? 
Well, uh, we've had announcements from BP and Shell, amongst others in the past, suggesting their diversification of their business model towards renewables and towards electricity. But both of them have backed away from that in the past. And I think we're in a period now where that looks like a very unwise business decision. And I think Total is catching up much more with where the world is at compared with some other oil majors, considering a revolution now underway, driven principally by carbon and the need to reduce emissions of climate change in gases, but also driven by the uh, impact of urban air pollution and the shift towards electric vehicles. All of these things now are lining up together and making it, I think, a stranded business model looking forward. The idea of going to ever more difficult geological structures to get more oil and gas out of the ground, oil in particular, to be fueling global transport, those days are coming to an end. And I don't think it's so much a slow death that's now going to be experienced by the oil companies, but actually quite a rapid one. Mm. Yes, there will still be a need for uh, oil to be used in aviation and some, uh, some trucking and other uh, road transport uh, applications. But actually, we're getting into a period now where the cleanup is beginning very rapidly. And actually, talking to oil executives in recent years, I've been struck by the way in which they talk about the future for their businesses being uh, in a rising oil price and then being able to get back to big profitability through an increase in the price of, of oil and gas. At the same time as they've been banking on that as a, as a route to salvation uh, for their business strategies, the renewable energy companies have been talking about their prices falling. Mm. And indeed, that's exactly what's happened as a result of them right. refining their technology and getting scale. Tony, the, now, Craig, uh, before, just before yourself, he uh, touched on the role of government in, in all of this. Um, and he touched on the fact that Total has the backing of the French government. How important is the role of government uh, in encouraging companies like Total to make this kind of a move? Well, governments have been behind a lot of the policies that have, that have been cleaning up our air and of which have been moving towards a low carbon economy. And that is essential because some of the things that are happening to our world right now, which are going to harm people, are so-called externalities of the market. So nobody's got a price yet on carbon properly being reflected in how prices are being charged. Therefore, you do need some interventions from governments to be able to help hmm. lower carbon technologies move into a position of an economic strength. And that's right. what's happened in some countries in the UK, for example. Mm -hmm. Offshore wind is now uh, competing with nuclear in terms of price. In fact, it's gone below nuclear uh, in terms of the cost of electricity. So, so government policy did that. And that's been essential because the market failures that have led to the climate changing and air pollution that's killing millions of people is not going to be corrected by, gov by businesses, rather, that are simply looking at their bottom line. The government does need to be there to help make this transition okay. accelerate. Right. So, Tony, the other thing that's happened today is the IEA has released its report on energy efficiency, um, and they are seeing more efficient use of uh, power production, and they're seeing global growth growing in a more energy efficient way. Do you see these, these kinds of, this kind of progress continuing over the next few years or do you see it plateauing off? Uh, well, it should continue. Uh, the the, the, the countervailing uh, uh, trend, of course, is more people being connected to electricity and people having more means to use it in terms of devices, lighting, vehicles and everything else. And that's to be welcomed. So we do need to very keep a very strong focus on energy efficiency and the efficient use of electricity going forward because demand is set to rapidly rise and at the same time as that rise in demand is expected of course we have to drastically reduce the emissions of greenhouse gases and so there's a real squeeze there but of course a combination of technology and policy between them and the right kinds of price signals we can get through this we can reduce the emissions coming from the uh, growth that's expected across the world and do that in a way which is compatible with keeping the global average temperature increase below 1.5 degrees. Okay. It's possible to do this, but right. we can't take our eye off the ball for a second. Okay. T uh, environmentalist and author Tony Juniper in Cambridge in the UK, thank you ever so much.